Chapter seven is the first chapter in unit two, which is entirely about scatter plots. We create a scatter plot when we have two quantitative variables. More specifically, when we have two quantitative variables that are paired in some way, so we end up with a number of x, y coordinate points. When we're asked to describe a scatter plot, we're going to use the acronym FUDS instead of SOX, and these letters stand for form, unusual features, direction, and strength. So let's start by walking through those four things in FUDS. When we talk about the form, we're just saying, is it straight? Is it curved? Is there no pattern at all? Uh, or is it something unusual? In most cases, we're going to be dealing with scatter plots that are straight, in which case we would describe them as linear. Uh, for most other scatter plots that aren't straight, we would just describe them as nonlinear. Unusual features, most notably, these are outliers that we see points in the scatter plot that are far away from the cluster of other points. But we also want to note if we have any gaps or, or clusters in the data. When we address the direction, we want to say, is it positive, is it negative, or is it neither? Positive is going uphill, negative is going downhill. Neither means it's flat, or we just don't see any association, any correlation between the two variables. In this graph here, which is showing uh, the percent of people who respond yes to the question, would you vote for a female for president? Uh, and then along the x-axis, we have the year since 1900. We can see that we have a positive uh, association in those two variables. And lastly, we want to mention the strength, which is just telling us how spread out these points are with respect to a line of best fit. So on one extreme, they could be really clustered around a uh, straight line, and another extreme, they could be really spread out. This really wouldn't even be a positive correlation. It's probably more flat. Uh, we would describe strength as weak. This one on the bottom would be a weak correlation. Uh, moderate or strong. This would be a strong correlation. Just a bit of terminology as well. We do want to be deliberate when we decide which variable goes on which axis. Uh, they have specific names. The x-axis is called the explanatory variable and the y-axis is called the response variable. They're called that because we like to think of the x-axis uh, explaining the behavior of the y-axis of the y variable. That's not always the case. They might not uh, be having any effect on each other. Um, but when we create our graph, we want to put the horizontal axis as the variable that's more likely um, the variable that's influencing that y variable, that vertical axis. They're also called to, uh, they're also referred to as the independent variable for the x-axis and the dependent variable for the y-axis. All right, so let's take all that information and let's look at this scatter plot of the heights and weights of a number of statistics students. So first off, we've chosen height to go on the x-axis. So this is the explanatory variable, and this is the response variable. And this makes sense because as we grow, uh, our weight is gonna increase uh, with each inch of height. So in other words, uh, our height is explaining our weight. It's predicting our weight. The weight is a response to uh, our increase in height. Um, when we look at this, if we were asked to describe it with FUDs, okay, the form is linear. Unusual features, we have one up there. That point is far away from the other ones. Um, direction is positive, uh, and strength is moderate to strong, and we can hedge our bets and say moderately strong. Uh, we would put this all on a blurb and make it about the context of the question, just like we always did with socks. Uh, so now if we look at the bottom here, it says how strong is the association between weight and height? Now. We're just looking at this, we're saying it's a bit scattered, but it's still fairly close to that line. We called it moderate, moderately strong. Um, the actual number that we can put on it is 0.664. This is called the correlation. So that correlation value of 0.644 is telling us how well does this set of data fit the line of best fit, which is the line that goes through this points, the most efficient line that goes through that these points and represents all of them. Now, this graph is actually a little different than the one on the previous page. Uh, it looks the same at first, but if we look closer, we can see that the height is now in centimeters. That's changed from inches. Uh, and the weights, which had been in pounds, uh, are now in kilograms. So when we change units, it's not going to change the correlation value. The scatter plot might look a little bit different, uh, but that correlation value is still going to be the same 0.644. So since the units don't matter, we can remove them altogether, just like we did with z-scores.
there's a somewhat involved explanation as to how this correlation value is calculated. I've come to realize that they pretty much never ask you these types of questions on the AP test, so I'm going to skip it. Um, if you're asked a correlation question, they're either going to give you that R value or you're going to use your calculator to figure out. This is the equation on the bottom. One thing that you might be expected to know is that when it boils down to it, this correlation value with that variable R is calculated using z-scores. Each point in a scatter plot has its own z-scores. It has its own two z-scores, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis. And that's what's being used to calculate that correlation value. And that's why it doesn't change when we shift the data or scale it by changing those units. Here's what you do need to know about correlation. It's always measuring the strength of the linear association between two quantitative variables. That's the only context in which we should use the word correlation. You shouldn't use it about anything else except a scatter plot and the strength of the linear association between those two variables. If you do, it's going to decrease your answer uh, to the next lowest score. The value of the correlation, R, is always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. If it's exactly equal to one of those numbers, it means the data, the points in the scatter plot fall exactly in a straight line with no deviation from that straight line. In other words, there's no scatter in the points. So it's possible to get values of negative one and positive one, but it pretty much never happens in real life because things don't uh, occur perfectly like that in real data. When we have a correlation near zero, uh, it means we have a weak linear association. They're just scattered everywhere. Uh, and the sign, positive or negative, gives the direction of the association. So positive associations go uphill, negative downhill. Correlation is symmetric. So in that previous example, we had the heights and weights of STAT students. Uh, the correlation between heights and weights was 0.644. If we reversed it and said find the correlation of weights with heights, it would also be that same 0.644. Correlation has no units, and that's because these are computed with z-scores. Uh, they're unaffected by changes in the center or scale, which we learned in unit one. Lastly, we only calculate correlation values in certain situations. First, we want to have a scatter plot that's approximately straight, approximately linear. We want to make sure there's no outliers in the data because a single outlier can change that correlation value quite a bit. And lastly, when we have that correlation value and we see that it's close to one uh, or close to negative one, in other words, there's a really strong association between those two variables. We want to keep in mind that correlation is not causation. That's a uh, saying that you may have heard uh, in other places outside of this class. It means that although two variables are closely associated, it doesn't mean that one is causing the other one. Okay? It's possible there's something called a lurking variable. Lurking variable is something that just exists in the background uh, and it's affecting both of these variables simultaneously. 